uh, as far as the tournament is concerned, though, that has actually been pretty good. Uh, like I am, um, I am actually enjoying this one. The one, all right, first round, a uh, lot of, um, a lot of pretty. Okay, to be fair, pretty straightforward. Apart from like the two matches that I think it was, we were all going to be kind of calling that it could get contentious. Uh, big complexity, I thought was going to be close, and it was close. Uh, I had complexity actually upsetting big in a best of one on that one. I had complexity, uh, you know, with with again that that uh, that level of perhaps surprise where you could potentially catch them off guard. If in a best of one, anything's possible, right? Like you could potentially have everything go your way. But again, like you say, you've pointed out, like complexity not always the strongest in the clutch sort of situations, and that ended up costing them. So big go through. But also, dude, were you expect? I didn't expect it to be this close. Sprout OG going to overtime. Holy smokes. That was uh, that was something that kind of coughed me our guard. I thought it would be close, but I didn't think it would be going to the distance like that. The thing with that one is, I actually think Sprout, in a sense, is slightly underrated, and Sprout is like, and OG is slightly overrated. The problem with OG is this, and people know this. I'm just not a big Nexa fan. Like, I think some of the talents. I think Dexter's a banger. I think when he has his game on flames, is good. Fico, the sad thing is, by the way, the one guy who actually doesn't look like he worked out was Neofrag. And if people don't know, he was the guy in Sinners that looked like he was going to be the next guy. But not, not everyone's ready to go up to the next level. Sometimes it doesn't work. So I think the talent in OG is crazy. Whereas the thing for Sprout is they look like they're trying to do it with like structure. They've got a couple of Danish players in there. They've got the. Like, I think they're actually a canny little squad. They're not. They're not bad. They're not going to do much, but they can, they can definitely win these games and mix it up. Because on paper, OG should have way more firepower. Obviously, I mean, even in this game, they did. Yeah, even in this, actually, that was the that was like the um, the the shocking one is like the is the one that that really I can't get uh, I can't figure out where I'm placing him yet, and and this is the really frustrating bit is Dexter, you know, because I always feel like this guy should have the firepower to just take over the server, especially against. I think he does usually. He didn't but in that, this one, but he usually does. I think. I mean, he, that's the thing, but sometimes he just drops off and sometimes it's, and it's in moments where his team really needs him. It feels like where he just sometimes just doesn't show up and maybe, and I guess he just maybe, maybe he had an off game in this sort of scenario, but, or maybe I've got like what confirmation bias or something where it's like, I already have this idea. No, no, so but it's way, his stats are way lower than they normally are. They are. But, but you know, it's just like, I feel like maybe he's a little off right now and I'm trying to figure out why, because I feel like he should be a guy who's taken who's taken over he he should have every everything uh there for him to be able to just take over especially in these kind of volatile situations he's got that kind of explosive uh capability so i was i was perhaps a little bit disappointed by his performance going into this one where um could it could have potentially uh seen more from him obviously um now i mean they're coming off of it uh was there any other match that uh, that kind of stood out for you uh I suppose like MIBR Nip was also kind of a weird one. Thirteen sixteen MIBR actually played it pretty close. I wasn't able to watch this one unfortunately, uh, so this one this one kind of threw me off. It's because the main problem is this. Much like you know now, like here's the thing. Now after the last couple of majors in the last year, we all know the up and coming Russian teams and the Russian players and the CIS squads and the tier two people and the ones that are on the brink. So the thing is, we're all versed, but what we don't know, none of us, is the Brazilian scene hasn't had the same exposure. Like everyone knows Furia, everyone knows Imperial, right? Most people couldn't even name the MIBR lineup. Most people know Phelps is in flux, so but. Do they know the other players? Most people probably couldn't even name all five gods. And, uh, sorry, um, Zero Zero Nation players, in my opinion. Like, the problem with the new talents coming out of Brazil is some of them are good. Like, some, I've heard a whole bunch of them have, like, skills. It's just a lot of them don't have experience. So, like, MIBR is a team where they've obviously paid it on a budget. They're not trying to be the biggest Brazilian team. But I've heard some of those guys are, are talents. Like, there's a reason why some of them, like, one of them even got ports recently, didn't he? So, yeah, I, I think it's quite interesting. MIBR, not a terrible project. Like the floor is better than you expect for a no-name team, basically, as in the players, you know. Well, again, it's like that, uh, what is it, uh, that element of surprise, like you pointed out, where perhaps you can fly under the radar. Teams aren't going to be as dialed in on what, you're, uh, what it is, uh, what kind of game you're playing. <sighs> Am I mistaken? Like, I don't think Tommy's tied to MIBR anymore, is he? I don't he is. He a, works with them behind the scenes. He works with them behind the scenes. But I mean, I thought that they had uh, they had like split up in terms of like the different brands going their ways, oh, uh, Immortals and MIBR know. and all that. But no, he's still he's still tied in on all that. All the same shit, isn't it? Yeah. No. Okay. The, I, why am I thinking that? I think it was from the Four Horsemen. No, you I think you're you thinking of when. Them. I think you're thinking of when Optic and Immortals used to be connected, like three, four years ago. So, for example, there was once a time when he was managing, like, MIBR, CSGO, and then they had, like, Optic with MSL and fucking, you know, that weird lineup for that one year before we went online. There was that. There was that period. But, no, he's still involved with MIBR. That's his main job. 
I, okay, fair enough. I was kind of curious about that. That's uh, well. Regardless, I mean, I feel like um, Tommy is like. Well, everyone tells me you know nothing about. I literally know the guy who's fucking doing all your contracts, you moron. I know it all and all the negotiations. That's, that's a yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if it was Tommy who was talking about that. How they'd uh, how they'd kind of like split up in the sense of the. But whatever. That is beside the point. It's just if he is actually still tied to MIBR, I would expect him to be making these kinds of plays, right? Because not nothing, nothing crazy, nothing flashy. Just consistently making the team better over time. And I'll tell you, you a factor. Yourself, go, it's because okay. right now. People like Fiorita and Imperial are going to want big salaries, similar. They're going to want big, big money. Even people like KNG wanted big, big money to stay in MIBR. That's the part that's not worth it yet. Because let's be real, even Fury is not like a world beater right now. They make like a semi or a quarter. That's the best result. So the reason why it's very shrewd, like you're saying, business-wise, well, here's the thing. Fans will think they're idiots, MIBR. They've been irrelevant for three, two years. No, they're not. Because you see them at these tournaments every now and then, and they have they pay probably cheap salaries for these players, but the genius like you said at the beginning of the episode is Brazilian players are guaranteed viewership so what they do is they are getting insane fucking like value out of paying for like a budget squad and then just riding the wave of the Brazilian fucking things and having people like Gowers watch the stream like that is actually that's actually a pretty good like short term player because what you need to do is this people don't get this there's very few teams can be like G2 or Fears and in theory, you try to like constantly just buy stars, buy stars, vitality. And it's like, we're just going to try and go for the number one all the time. What you normally do is this. You go, right, am I in a period where I could, where I could like win? No. Right, go budget. Go like a very efficient approach. Then you wait for your moment. When an angle comes along, so for example, maybe in a year from now, they could get like KNG and fucking, you know, case. Now you go and you put all your budget and you go, right, I'm going to try and win a major this year. But the years when you're not trying to win a major, there's no point spending 80% of what the guy who does win the major wins when you don't even make the playoffs, you know. That doesn't make business sense right now, I'm afraid. Yeah, no, that's something that was actually brought up by him consistently where it's just, yep. uh, it always, he's, he's that guy who's really good at just uh, the trade-offs. What are, what are you at? What's actually, what are you getting for the cost? What are you getting for the spend? And uh, I and feel I like- I'll say really this as well. I think he pulled off one of the greatest deals in the history of CSGO because think guys about where this guy was when he was sold and where he was afterwards. He sold Cold Zero for so much fucking money to FaZe Clan. And that is the ultimate stock move where I sold high. It just tanked after I sold it and I just have all the money. You've got fucking nothing. Because it, Cold Zero just just dropped off a cliff in phase, then he just became irrelevant. But at the time, he was like a world beater. Like, that was a big, big move when it was done. And Tommy got a big buyout for that, I'm telling you. It's mad to think how that all played out as well. It's, yeah, I mean, it's so crazy. How quickly and I've happened. always told this story, so I won't go into it again. But I even you don't know... Lopez is gangster because it's not it's not something he's doing intentionally it is because he's a Finnish robot like here's what would happen without like going into all the details essentially here's the gist of it this is years ago now it was like three four years ago what would happen is like this right for example if people know the story called Zira and Nico it was already rumored like they're friends they want to play together and then so they approached them like oh we'd like to buy called Zira it's like like it was like yeah this is the price and then they're like uh we don't want to pay that we'll offer this he goes I didn't stutter I said the price, didn't I? He didn't say it like that, but I'm making it cool, obviously. I didn't start, did I? And then the guy goes, well, I don't have enough for that, do And he goes, well, you can't pay the price then. Goodbye. Deed. And then what happens is they then think, because you know how players are, especially Brazilian players, well, we've got a few cards up our sleeve, a few tricks we can play, a few dirty tricks players can play. We'll use the fans against him like they always did. But the problem is, nah, this is a different MIBR, homie. So what happened was, you remember... Even though he hadn't signed, Cold Zero was already in Serbia. Do you remember this story? He was just playing a boot camp yeah, when he called Faze. And, and then they really thought they're so dumb that that meant like he had to sell him. And they were going, well, he's already here. He's going, well, that's a shame, isn't it? Because he's just not on your team, is he? But we're going to attend this event. That's a real shame, isn't it? Because he won't be playing on your team. And then they were going, but we don't want him. And he was like, so he just basically was just like, look, when you meet my price, come back. It's like a shop. You can have him. But we're not bartering on this one. Like, I'm telling you, that this player's worth this to me. And we'd have to get, because remember, he was giving away his best player. Like, his team's going to tank when you do that. So what he did correctly was make FaZe Clan. By the way, FaZe Clan isn't the ends. It's not like they have no money. He's making one of the biggest teams in the world. Like, I don't care that you want to play with you. I don't care that you don't like MIB anymore. I don't care that you're in service. This is the price you will pay. And the best part is, as you might know, he was it. Can ASL New York. You remember that, guys? He did end up playing days later because that's what happens when you know what leverage is. Most teams hate the idea of the oh, the fans are against us. That's where you get these mad stories like I've released him for free, even though I could sell him. Like those madden me. So I love it. I love his that's gangster. Amazing, that's right? 
That gangster is fire. So all you need to know is this. Whenever they all talk shit, you know, remember Cold Zero talking shit on device like he was crying in the club. Bitch, you were crying in the fucking DMs, homie. You were, please, please, please. And also, this is why you got to be careful what you wish for. Because how did that work out? How did, that, how did that work out, Nico? By the way, you know my favorite cunt move Nico's ever done? He's done a lot, Samler. But my favorite is that. he for If you don't know, guys, for something like a year or two years before that, they were trying to get to any team that they could get to together to play because they believed this is the this is the combo that's going to dominate CS. They were thinking of going to Team Liquid, I've heard. There's a world where Nico did join MIBR slash SK when they were SK with Rain or something instead of Simple and Flamey. You remember when they were cycling all the foreign talents and end up with Stewie and Tarek. By the way, that is literally like, don't worry, we have Nico and Rain at home, Stewie and Tarek. Like, that is like the fucking meme. So anyway, when they were cycling all that, so essentially Nico for years, like, oh, baby, baby, like, we're Starcross lovers, like, we got to get together, oh, long distance relationship, like, I believe in you, though, when we live together, it's going to be so good. And then when they were in the team, finally, and then Nico was like thinking like, this guy's fucking washed. Nico didn't just even go like, I think we need, you know, like to bring in some different people. Or you remember what he did? He was just like, well, guys, it's been real. I'm going to G2 for Mega Bucks. See you later. I'm, off. I'm out of this sinking ship. Like, <laughs> That's weird. There's all like breadhead shaped holes in the box. Don't worry about that. I'm off. I'm off on the lifeboat. There's only space for one, I'm afraid. <laughs> and then called Zero. That's why I've always said, I'll quickly finish the story. This is why, by the way, I need to do an anime about esports. Because the one thing called Zero did do, his last great shot, which did land, was his gangster was also quite on point. Because do you remember what he did? He convinced FaZe that he wanted Carrigan. Now, what I love about that, oh, it fills me with joy. It's like a fucking, it's like one of those Mexican, like, telenovelas or something. Think about it, right? What he's done is like, Nico? On this, like, where are you? Like, what are you doing? Like, me and more. Like, obviously, he's just broken out. Nico's betrayed him. He's fucking around with Nexa and Hunter and all them in G2 now. So he goes, Oh, my ex is gonna fuck with me. Well, you know what? The end, the ex of my ex is my friend. And he went and he goes, I want Carrigan back in phase. And spoiler, that led to the chain event. Sure, called Zero got removed. That's the bad part. That eventually led to Carrigan winning a major in phase, which Nico could never do. So that, that was also gangster in a way. And the way that story ended was good. It was a good, it was good anime episode. But this is why we need the historian, you know. This is why you need to, you need to keep things relevant, right? You need to keep, yeah. uh, you need to keep these kinds of stories going, uh, keep building on them. Because we, I mean, we just pulled that out of mentioning Cold, who has completely dropped out. But that is, he is still part of this like incredibly important slice of history that's led to today. Yeah, basically, we actually knew even back in 2019, a lot of Colds aren't as dangerous as they are purported to be. <laughs> Well, you know I, mean? I don't want to sell it as well, mate. I've just got, I've got that style, haven't I? I've just got that. I don't want to send it, mate. I don't want to send it. Always have. Well, <laughs> as far as uh, as far as the tournament is concerned, it's actually progressing still. So, uh, I was uh, I was kind of looking forward to these best of threes, and uh, so we got into the upper bracket. Like first round, actually, real quick, what do you think about this first round best of one? Should should it be just best of three through and through, or do you care about like, do you think? Uh, having a best of three in the first round, given how the seating, how the seating works, would best of one or best of three change anything, or would best of three make it even less possible for there to be an upset? I would right, always pick best would. of three. I would always want best of three. I hate best of one, but this is the plane. And even if you lose the B one, you play a B three in the lower bracket. So right, three, right? being as some of the teams there are utterly terrible, and it is mainly about let's get Fury and OG. Let's get the good teams through. Yeah, the problem is I, I sort of agree. Like I don't know that I do want to watch Pain and IHC. Like they did play a best of three. I don't really want to watch that. You know what I mean? It's not really what I'm buzzed up for. So normally, yeah, I'm against B ones, but that is probably the least important B one. If you look at like, there's not usually top top teams there. There's a few, but they're going to get through because of the format. You got, you got my soy face there for a second, just because uh, I had this prediction this morning where I was like, okay, I'm looking, I'm looking at the lower bracket. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be pain versus IHC. And when we're recording this, IHC have actually won 2-0 over pain. But the joke that I had was that they've intentionally put pain and furia in the same, you know, tree so they could guarantee get a, a Brazilian yeah. team. And, you know, you're guaranteed at least going to have one Brazilian team. And the obvious joke is that IHC are just like, you know, like in a, in an anime, they just keep like, they're in the hyperbolic chamber, they just keep getting powered up. So, you know, they, they got, they got, you know, they kind of got beaten up by cloud nine. Fair enough. But they've just two owed pain gaming. And, and good, remember, two O's. they were the ones who beat zero, zero nation at the major. They just were Brazilian killers, apparently. <laughs> so do I'm obviously they go spiritually in, and then uh, an IHC like, get, talent. Know, Furia just get fucking rocked by this team, and now you've got IHC going through, and Furia are out. 
No Portuguese. Nobody's allowed to have Portuguese teams. Nobody. Not Blast. Not ESL. Nobody's allowed to have Portuguese. No, none of that Portuguese. Oh, be viewership. hilarious. Because as be you say, so tie it into what you said about Blast. Take if Furia don't get through, they will. I guarantee it'll lower the viewership. Not maybe like hundred k, but it might lower the viewership. I would expect it to logically. I'm kind of curious. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think Katowice. What was the peak last year? Oh, this page has expired, of course. Thank you. What was the peak for Katowice last year? I mean, I would I assume it's the final. Crazy. It's like Phase it G2 because it was epic. Katowice, or G2 Navi one of the two. 20 IEM Katowice 2022. Was it G2 Navi, no, maybe? There's the ESL Impact Katowice. That's, uh, that's, that's definitely uh, IEM 22. All right. So here we are. IEM Katowice 2022. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. 1.1 million peak between uh g2 and phase in the uh, grand finals but that so, was also if you remember because like that was a super close game like, well, i think the second map was like the one with like five ot's or something. those are the ones that get everyone on the stream oh yeah because the runner-up uh, no, the runner-up almost cracked a million g2 navi 979,000, yeah. and then it drops off a cliff g2 versus vp 561,000. so you know, it's like if you get if you get in deep, I mean, obviously these are the peak, you know, deep deep in the tournaments, all that. But if you're gonna take like total hours washed or whatever, you you you're gonna take everything that you can get. And so having having the Portuguese teams, it's clear that if you don't have a Portuguese team going deep, your metrics are going to look shittier to the average fan. Now, it is worth mentioning, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier as well, is that not all fans are are um not all fans are of equal value. Like you're you're going to be pro you're going to be hoping you don't have to, to preach to me. Oh, that was you preach to the choir there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, keep yeah, going, yeah. keep going. <laughs> Not all viewers, right? You know, because if you if you're you're obviously going after North American and European viewers above all other viewers because you know Portuguese viewers. What are the ad sales? What are, like what do you how much how much is it worth to have ads in port in port in Brazil or you know how much are you getting back on that? Uh, Russian same thing right now, especially given the whole you know the whole situation in that region. You know, like what's what's the value of those viewers? Uh, then then the 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 Blast CEO was saying how China is actually one of their biggest you know that one of their biggest communities and you know growing and all of that. It's like what are you doing in China though? Like you, you're not having any events there. You're not really doing Maybe, maybe match fixing. Uh, yeah, it, a lot of gambling. So you know you're still going after the uh, you're still going after the European and the North American. So whatever you can do. So when it's like G two and Phase that are just blowing the top off the place, you probably are you know just in the money if you're if you're IEM at that point if you're ESL. Uh, still wanting to prioritize the EU and um, NA players. But this is this is really the thing. Like the long game. This is what's really interesting is that now events like Katowice, events like Cologne, they just blow everybody out of the water. The only thing that can compete are the majors. Otherwise, it's just Katowice and Cologne in terms of peak viewership, in terms of viewership overall. The, the, like ESL being consistent year on year uh, with naming it as well. So you know Katowice, you know Cologne now. It's, it's just been a thing that's been going for almost a decade now. You hear that name, you know that tournament's a big one. So they've done a really good job of just building it up year on year and making sure that these flagship events, because if you look at the Pro League uh, viewership stats, they drop by half. So, you know, people aren't as interested in Pro League. There isn't that name value. You want a spicy uh, that, uh, take? Building up. Go for it. If I'm ESL, here's what I do. Look, Blast could do it as well, but they just won't. If I'm ESL and I have so much of the calendar, I would be very cynical, Semler. What I would say is this. I have my normal circuit. I have Kadovice. I have Cologne. I have a major. I have Pro League. So I've got all the real things where I invite based on world ranking. I invite based on partner teams. I set it up. It's all a legitimate competition with competitive integrity. But I would have the occasional invitational. And here's what it's called, Semler. I'd even call it like ESL prime time. And what I would do is the whole premise is I just invite the teams that bring the viewership. So you know what? Here's my list. I'm inviting Navi, Phase, G2, um, fucking, who else you want? Cloud9, you know what? MIBR, Furia. Like, it might be an eight-team tour. It's just an invitational. It's got good prize money, and it's just to build my viewership. That means I have an event every year where I'm just guaranteeing the viewership. That's just going to blow up, isn't it? And then it can make up for the other tournaments. Maybe, like maybe Pro League's less interesting, or maybe one of these events, like we say, the wrong team gets through and it kills the viewership. So remember, you'd be justified. Like I'm saying, make it an invitation. It's not part of the circuit in the same way. No, no team can go, but I should. Hey, Rock can't go, but I should be there. You shouldn't, you cocksucker. Bring some viewers. You know what I mean? Put some. It's like the WNBA. Put some bums in seats and we can talk. We can talk all day long. It wouldn't be about gender at that point. It should be about business. So I'd say the same thing. Like let's get the view because right now viewership is all that sells our game. So I love it because this is this goes into the next point. When you look at the groups for Katowice, holy shit balls! Like Group A is the, listen, Liquid, Cloud Nine, Navi, G Two, Big Phase Clan. That's just Group A. 
And then you go to group B, Heroic, OG, Mouse, Vitality, Nip, and Outsiders. It's like, dude, you better be, you better, like only three of these teams get through. You better be hoping in group A that you got G2, FaZe, and Navi getting through at this point. Because otherwise, you know, your viewership is toast. If these guys get knocked out and instead you've got like even Cloud9 or Liquid, you know, going through and then what, on the other side, you're going to have any, what, pick your poison at that point. Outsiders, heroic, like who cares in terms of viewership? These guys are going to get through and nobody's going to watch. You, you, you've, you've screwed yourself in terms of like, that's where it really blows my mind. Like, how did they determine the group seating and how are they not kind of maybe, you know, giving it a nudge if you're ESL to say, maybe phase goes in group B. Or, you know, like, how are you not doing that little switcheroo? Because unfortunately, <laughs> fair play, for this tournament at least, they have, that's one thing I've given props to for ESL with the big events. They have established that they set the rankings in place and then they just invite based on that. And they set the group. They seed based on that. That's how they do it. The thing is, though, I will say, that is, and we've discussed this many times in the past, so spoiler, it's on past episode. They definitely don't do that for Pro League. I've heard a million times over. You'll always see magically, one group seems to have a lot of NA teams. And once you, all the Brazilian, they just don't let them all fly in at the same time. That, that is a semi dodgy because that does actually affect the credibility and the integrity of the tournament. But for the other ones, at least, as far as I know, they just, they just take it on the chin if they get unlucky. Because, yeah, obviously, Group B, even though it has some good teams like sleeper teams, the names aren't as big, the names look shit in Group B. It's, and it's, uh, like you said about fan bases, think about it. If things went wrong, you could end up in a world where in the in the first group, you fuck up and you get nearly all your NA and all your CIS viewership killed in the group. You know what That's I mean? It. That's it. Na'Vi yeah. looks vulnerable. They're going to knock out one or the other, Cloud9 or Na'Vi. <laughs> well, there's a lower bracket. So yeah, there's a lower fair. bracket. But uh, I mean, still, like even in the upper bracket, I mean, you're gonna you're already gonna put one of your big CIS names out of it. Although Cloud9 can't hold a camel to Na'Vi. Na'Vi are your biggest draw in terms of viewership right now. Uh, apart from G2 and FaZe. Like, you you have to uh, get Na'Vi through, or at least get them deeper through and get them through into the playoffs, because otherwise, man, it's going to get... It's going to be grim. The other side of it, it's like, yeah, okay, fine. Mouse could potentially come up with something good. They could give us a repeat performance. We haven't seen them play... We, I mean, I'm throwing this out there, but I'm pretty sure we haven't seen them play since Rio, so... We don't have anything to go off of uh, as far as Mouse's level. Wh That's what because, again, they, they're another team suffering from this partner approach to the scene. They were top four at the major. Brilliant. The problem is they're not a blast partner, so they're not yeah, in blast no pro fall finals. They're not in the fucking thing. Now, sure, like every team, if you're Ents, if you're them, if you're Vance, yeah, you can always come through the showdown. The showdown is mega hard to get through, and only one team comes through each one, remember? So that is brutal. And like you might see there, you might end up playing bloody Vitality or something. You know what I mean? Like some actual real killer team so yeah there's a reason why mouse yeah you're right they haven't played since then they've done fuck all yeah. Is that so it's, it's uh big big question marks there uh i guess i guess if anything mouse should be grateful that they got og right off the bat uh they could potentially ease in on that one and you know og aren't going to have anything to go off of that's the other painful thing for og you know that you're thinking that og oh cool you know this is their opportunity to shine it's going to be a bit of a rough start for them because if they had even uh, you know a team like heroic if og you know run into heroic first round or something like that then it's like okay they they know what to expect and they can they can play to that and do some uh, do some research og are going in completely dark on this one so that's a, that's a rough break for OG. You kind of feel for him on that one. I'm sure they would have preferred to get uh, a team that was a little bit more well-known, a little bit more well-versed. Um, Nip and Vitality right off the bat as well. That's the banger, mate. Because here's the thing. If you've seen Nip, even before they had Hedrick, like, I'll say this. So far, Hedrick hasn't looked that good, guys. I mean, one thing I actually didn't know, because I never used to watch part. him when he was at the lower level, is this is insane. Do you know he never was an AWPer originally? He was apparently an, a rifle player, and then after Monacy went, they made him the AWPer. So... That's a little bit like, eh, what? What are we doing here? Like, I thought this was like a, I thought this was the next up and coming opera. This is the next wonderful or fucking what? So, really? So the reason I bring that up is because let's be real, he hasn't really fragged out so far, guys. The joke so far is like everyone else in the team's being more dead. Like, so far, it kind of eats it. Brolan's back, Alexi's fragging out. At the other tournaments, it was people like Rez and them that were having the big games. So, I think the key thing for me with Nip is I still think they're a sleeper. I think they're pretty good. And the thing with Vitality is, even though they have looked better against some not that great opposition, Position. Vitality looked pretty dodgy the last few months. Like, if they turn up and it's just like the Zebu show, they can get fucking beaten by Nip here. For reals. <laughs> Without a doubt, they certainly can. They are they are definitely showing that they're vulnerable. I mean, it's still Zero doing the majority of the lifting on that team. It is absolutely crazy uh, how much work that guy can do. He is a workhorse in that in that context, and it it still feels like you're always kind of left wondering what what is the rest of uh what is you know Spinks is he going to show up and take over? He's been kind of hit and miss. Dupree showed some spikes there stat, for a bit. That'll blow your mind. A, a piece of it. trivia because I'm the esports historian. All right, right, Zero. 
was at Katowice 2019. It was a major with uh, Vitality, obviously, when he first began his career. 2020, he was there again. We had the one where we had to go online, but it was still there. 2021 was online. So skip that one. So for Lance, we're coming to 2022, the one that was won by Fears, and now we're at 2023. So this is going to be his fourth Katowice, right? He's never made the playoffs ever. Really? Oh, they don't bring that up when they try and tell he's the GOAT, do they? They don't, they don't, they somehow forget that detail. In the same way as he's not done almost nothing at majors. Yeah, it's wild, isn't it? It's pretty. So actually, there's the other thing. If you're Z, we should be super more. This Completely. is a big one. You know, you've got to get this one, mate. Like, I'm not, here's the thing. I'm not blaming Z, we entirely. He has had some bad kind of eats here, but you've got to get it this time. Come on. Like, the team's good enough this time. You've got to get at least, at least make the playoffs. That's all I need. Come on, make the playoffs. You can do it. He can do it. Better, yeah, no, with that, I mean, it's it's especially with the amount of money that they've spent on that roster lately. If you aren't making the playoffs as Vitality, it's a disaster. And uh, that was, what was that? Was that, uh, that was Maniac's point, wasn't it? Coming out of last year where he was just saying like, listen, you're, you're, you're still, it's still considered a disaster as far as the performance last year. This year, you really have to make something, you have to blow the roof off the place if you're Vitality, especially because you didn't make any of these roster changes the way that other teams have made. Um, you know, FaZe playing with stand-ins, although, the, although uh, FaZe is supposed to be playing with Rain. Uh, this tournament, he's yeah. supposed to make his return. Yeah. Um, also, um, Roban will be back as well. So that's, a, you know, it should be a full strength, full bore phase here. And uh, they should be swinging for the fences. Uh, hopefully Rain is dialed in. That's that's going to be the question, you know. Um, uh, newborn Babe may not have been getting the best sleep. I hear that that happens. So, <laughs> you know, hopefully he's going to be sharp and he's going to be able to, to, to show a good level. Uh, big have just caught the short end of the stick here on this one, unfortunately for themselves, you know, going into group a going up against G2 first G2 just look, uh, phenomenal. They, they, they look like a team that, I mean, I'm just hoping that Nico shows the same level, man, like, or, or even just close to the same level as we saw blast because blast, he just looked completely unstoppable. It just looked like the player to beat in the tournament. And so if we can get even the, a similar kind of performance out of Nico here, Dude, this is, they are going to be a team to be reckoned with going into these groups. It's going to be sick. I'm actually really stoked to see uh, G2 just kind of maul this group and get through into uh, the, the next uh, stage, into the qualified. That's uh, why this but... game's an, an underrated matchup, though, because everyone looks at the firepower. Look at the names. Like, there's no one on, on you look on, if you're, you look on big, there's no one like Nico, Monty. But here's the thing. Big is always a fucking uh, a test in a way you can never expect. They yeah, anytime they, the they play teacher. a top team, they just rise to the level. And partly because they play real system counter strike with set things on maps where they've studied it, they've got Gobby, they've got Tabs, and they've got this whole history. They've got all German players speaking one language. Like the, the fun thing is about this matchup is yeah, it's the massive power punching from G2. And if G2 everything goes well, they they can smoke them 2 0. But there's also the world where big steals a map, maybe it's Nuke or something, and then suddenly you're into this scenario. And then it's like a the third map, it's like an Anubis or overpass, it's a 16 12, and it's going, oh, it's getting a bit off. Yeah, that, that's good. It's a good warm up test for them, in my opinion. Because I still don't know if I believe G2. I think they, they still look like they're on like a weird honeymoon period from that tournament. Even though it's not a honeymoon period for the lineup. Like, all they've done is play a blast groups after playing that fucking, the tournament where it was like no pressure whatsoever. So I need to see, this is a real match now. Yeah, this could actually, and I mean, I like how you paint that picture. Again, it's a good reminder of as well that Big are, are back to that full German lineup. I guess the reason why I don't really always consider Big to be um, a real threat is that uh, is that Searson continues to leave me wondering you know oh, when, when when is he gonna he's take over yeah you know it's it it, it sucks yeah, to yeah. say because i it's it's not it's not you know when you make these kinds of points it's not out of a, a place of ill will oh. you really do hope to see the best out of a player and when a player shows you what he's capable of online and like the best case scenario kind of in environment for him you you know to not see that translate to land and to not see that translate to the big matches it's always painful you're always left hoping that he's going to be able to unlock that full potential and, and do the damage and every time i watch Searson play you know it's just it, it's always that same thing where there's always that that hesitation to fully commit to big because you you don't quite have like you say that that star rifler i uh, you know you don't really have that that star rifler to take over half the time it's fucking tabson and he's the igl it shouldn't be tabson who's having to do that kind of heavy lifting and then, uh, and then if you can't fall back on Searson, you're just not going to quite have that firepower to be contending in the top five. You're going to be in that perpetual like gatekeeping top 10 where, like you say, you'll play up to the level of the top five and you should beat the teams that can't quite get up, get through. Like you should be in that space where you're very firmly in like the 10th, 11th, you know, kind of ranking, right? And that's, it feels like that's where Blake, bigger at actually off the top of my head. I can't remember. What are they right now? Well, there must be like what? 10, 11, 12 or something. They're nearly always around there. They might even be top 10, are they? Let me have a look. Right now, really? Whoa, 16th. Man, I wouldn't have had them that low. Okay. 
Okay, then. Well, then. I mean, right. again, they're not at the blasts, though, Samuel. So we just That's had right. two blasts You're in a row. So points. that fucks you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're not getting those points. That's yeah. Well, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, let me see here. Yeah. But uh, that that is a really good point, though, that you bring in, as in, like, they have this homogenous team that could actually uh, take on the uh, the G2 International Project. So fascinating. Fascinating to see if, uh, if that pans out for sure. See more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.